Welcome. Uh, today we have a very special visit from the Black Heart Orchestra from the United Kingdom. Uh, they're a multi award winning duo, duo that has simply, they, they simply make the best, uh, some of the best, I should say. I better be careful because I've got a lot of other friends over there, but really some of the best music coming out of the United Kingdom. Uh, the band is made up of uh, vocalists uh, Chrissy Mostyn and uh, Rick um, Pilkington. Uh, thank you, Chris, Chrissy and Rick, uh, for taking the time to speak to us today on the Progressive Rock Central. Thank you for having us and thank yeah. you for that introduction. We feel a bit like have you, you've got the wrong band on. <laughs> <laughs> I've got I that. That next week. Yeah, I don't think we could live up to that. Corner. No, but thank you very much. Yeah, That's a really nice. Oh, no, you guys. Oh, thank you uh, for having us. Yeah. You guys have some fantastic music that everyone should hear. And um, I'm lucky enough to have heard that album, but I definitely need to go back into the um, the back catalog because there's a lot of good music. Um, but tell us about the origin of the name Black Heart Orchestra and how the two of you met and uh, decided to make music together. What do you want to start? Well, um... We actually met before the Black Heart Orchestra. We were um, playing together um, for about seven years before the Black Heart Orchestra came to life. Um, we'd, we'd made a couple of albums and we were kind of feeling quite stuck with our name because we were just called Black Heart and people either thought we were going to be a heavy, heavy rock uh, band or we were something to do with Joan Jett or um, we were we were really struggling we'd invested time and effort into it and um, we just started buying more instruments and stuff and we were expanding and we'd had this meeting where we were thinking we need to change our name it's just really not and it it was holding us back I think um, and then we were trying to think of names, weren't we? And it was so hard. Well, we didn't want to abandon the name yeah. Blackout all, all together because we'd already invested quite a few albums in that name and we'd done thousands of gigs under that name. That's so, <laughs> well, we've probably done about a thousand. Of, uh, so we, we wanted to just evolve the name as the music was evolving. The music was changing rapidly uh, from being originally quite an acoustic-based mm. thing that we were doing. Uh, I mean, we, we were quite unsure whether we were had one foot in folk music and one foot in rock music. Not quite sure exactly where we were actually grounded at that time, but then we started to introduce synthesizers, a lot more um, rocky instruments into, into what we were doing. We were learning more instruments and incorporating many more different types of instruments in the, in the live show. And we thought this is changing completely. And the albums were changing and becoming much bigger and more expansive. And, yeah, so, we were kind of finding our feet, weren't we? We were I finding think our we own were finding sound. The reality of what we were all about. So I, was, the concept was we, we were actually starting to think like an orchestra, even though there were only two of us. And on stage, we were trying to think how can we put more sounds into this show um, without using backing tracks and without using you know computers and things like that. And and it. it, it we, we just were thought, a gig, hey, weren't we? Yeah, yeah, we, yeah were, we were. We'd actually, we were struggling with names and we had lists of things. We had millions of logos for alternative <laughs> names, but nothing. We kind of tried to convince ourselves that maybe this was the name and this was the name. And it's so hard naming bands because they're all already taken. Um, yeah. And we were at a, a classical music concert, actually. One of my favourite yeah. artists is uh, a guy called Ludovico Einaudi. Um, we were at Blenheim Palace outside midsummer, um, getting ready to watch him. Um, and you just turned to me and you said, what about, did you write it down or did you just say, just say it? it. I said, hey, you know. What about the Black Heart Orchestra? Yeah. And I was like, uh, ah, oh. And it was like a click yeah. thing. We, 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 were, we were actually developing the previous name, the previous identity into a new identity, which was kind of uh, offering a new expanded yeah. version of what we've been before. So it, it just felt like a great natural evolution, both as a name and as a concept for the band. And I think once we once we found ourselves being called the Black Art Orchestra, I think that actually accelerated our journey mm. into thinking in a different way, in a wider, bigger, 
kind of way with our music. So it, and, it gives the power of good. And people got it. At first we were like, well, people get it. You know, it's kind of two people, but but people did. And it was just like a really wonderful, it was like a revelation really, wasn't it? it was yeah, like, it was a good moment, yeah. Yeah, so that's how it kind of got going. I love that uh, quote that Rick had in uh, the Prague Magazine, that music has changed from a very narrow world to a multi-lane freeway. And uh, yeah, I think that that pretty well summed it up. I mean, it's it really is an orchestra. I mean, with the amount of, uh, I think it's 13 or so music uh, instruments that you guys play. Um, yeah, you definitely sound like an orchestra. It's wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. Thank I you, think yeah. I, I think we kind of enjoy the um, throwing. We didn't have any rules anyway, but it kind of made us even more ruleless um, because it because it's nice to kind of have like the smallest sound and the biggest sounds. Of, you know, in, on different songs, we like to sort of mix it up. We like playing with the silence mm. just as much as we like playing with the sounds. It's kind of we like sort of weaving a little bit in yeah you know and creating a bit of an atmosphere hopefully yeah and it gave us a kind of a license to do anything we wanted to do <laughs> it gave us the freedom to think we can do anything you know we're not stuck to being a band with a, with a regular format um you know i've been in bands in the past and you know you have a, a drummer behind you you have a singer in front of you you have a bass player over there and i'm the guitar player and those kind of compartmentalized bands i, I loved them i played in bands all my life but when, when you remove those compartments and anybody can play anything or do anything or contribute to a song in any possible way, it's total freedom. Yeah, and that's goes. when something really great can happen. Not always. It, well, not always, <laughs> but you know, it gives you the opportunity to do anything yeah. and that's a fantastic feeling. All right. Well, I first came in contact with you guys uh, while writing a review for Mesmeranto. Uh, mm -hmm. If people, if you haven't heard it yet, please give it a listen. And it's one of the, uh, on one of the major music platforms, it is a fantastic album. Tell us about um, <clears throat> the song. And I specifically chose Left to Right because of all that's going on in, in the Ukraine and, and things like that. But talk about that and just talk about how that song developed and how you normally write a song the writing process that was actually written on my little toy keyboard which is just over there in my office yeah. it's like this little 20 dollar uh, keyboard that i bought in australia and i remember it was like the first song of the year of that that album being written and i remember just sitting there i think it was like the second of january and i just kind of quite often when we sit down to write or when i do or when you do we don't tend to have a specific aim in mind it's usually to just play to literally play um and it was just play and it just kind of came out as this you know this anti-war this song for peace and it, it obviously is about war on the larger scale but it's also about like the personal struggles that we you know our internal battles as well so it's kind of I like I, I, our songs tend to take on a few different meanings, don't they? And I like that people can take them and make them into whatever they want it to be, if you know what I mean. Am I making sense? Yes. Oh, definitely. <laughs> yeah. And, and also the um, internal battles that countries have politically with um, you've, you've got one heck of a race going on in France right now. Um, I might talk to you a little bit about my um, uh, professor, uh, what I'm doing there. But before that, I was a, a history and a political science um, major. So that stuff wow. still means a lot to me. But um, definitely, uh, you you wrote the song, you know, before any of this happened, but it definitely needs to resurface again, uh, because uh, we all need to be reminded conflict never uh, never gets us anywhere that kind of kind of thing especially what's going on absolutely. absolutely it's like it's it's crazy isn't it we would think that we'd come on so far but yeah history you know was it margaret atwood who said history doesn't repeat itself but it rhymes or something and it's like <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah it's um 
that that song probably needs to be in the set on the on the new tour really it does, doesn't yeah. it because yeah, it's it, a very appropriate song there yeah and people kind of connected with it even you know a few years ago. i mean we've never really toured mesmeranto yet because of the um <laughs> what is this life it's bizarre isn't it so we've not really we've played but we wrote that song a bit in advance of the album didn't we so we we're playing it live before yeah. mesmeranto was released and people really connected with it didn't they they did and they will do so more i yeah. think so much more unfortunately now it'll be a harder song to play now i think yeah okay. but, but it probably needs playing right now mm. you know we need to remind ourselves that's the goal is peace not the goal is winning yeah at all. yeah true and what are you going to win uh, the way things are going over there right now no mm, winning uh, either side even if the ukraine does push them completely out i mean uh, the one thing is hopefully it it does bring europe together and uh, it's definitely brought us closer to europe again thankfully yeah um, which that should never, uh, the US is what I'm talking about. <clears throat> Yet that never should have been separated, that uh, bond we've had. Um, mm -hmm. You also agree. Right, so much, yeah, sorry. Go no, ahead. no, go ahead, go ahead. I was, I was gonna no, move I, to something else, but go ahead if you wanna finish it. No, I was just gonna say, you know, there's already been so much loss now, hasn't there? You know, it, we can't forget that there's people dying or, every day and our media coverage doesn't seem to be as I don't watch the news so much but I couldn't escape it when it first happened and now I don't seem to be seeing it as much and it's like but this is still happening so what you know yeah it's, it's incredibly sad well let's hope some good comes out of it ultimately if that's absolutely absolutely possible it, even if it just teaches us that this has been a big waste of time and a big waste of life yeah. let's not do this kind of thing too often because it doesn't work if we can learn that from it then you know i guess it's so anyway it's, we'll it's such a we'll see. yeah terrible situation isn't it all right you also did another fantastic video about a very important issue uh going around the world with the manic street preachers um oh. if you tolerate this uh your children will be next Talk a little bit about that. That was a wonderful video, great song, great meaning behind it. Yeah, I mean, what, we don't do like lots of covers or anything, but I think it was late last year and we were, um, we knew we weren't going to be releasing the album for a while. Um, and we just started talking about it and um, I'd sent you the song. Mm -hmm. um, I was like, I think we should do a version of this. It feels so relevant for now. Again, you know, it's almost like pre-Ukraine as well, but, you, you know, it's still relevant for that as well as, you know, the climate crisis. Yeah. Um, but all of these things are happening under our noses and we can't look away. We can't look away. We have to do something now, don't we? Um, so we uh, got in touch with a charity, uh, a not-for-profit called Just One Tree. So we were helping push their organization through it as well. They're a, a great company who plant trees for a pound donation and they plant sea kelp as well uh, to help offset carbon emissions in the oceans and things. So it's, um, it felt like quite a, it feels like quite a long time ago now, but um, we felt really involved with it, didn't we? When we created the song, we felt really. Well, you see, I, I think music has a great power you know, greater than any news broadcast or documentary yes. or anything. Music and songs have an incredible power that I don't think we really understand. Maybe it's maybe it's good that we don't understand it because it's kind of deeper than literal understanding, isn't it? It's just something that, that flows through us as human beings in a different way. And songs and music can say so much in, a, in such a vivid way. Um, and, and I guess that song to us when we really thought about that song, even though it had been written in a different time, a different place, about a different subject altogether, somehow the, the spirit of that song seemed to, again, click with the present, yeah. uh, even though it was 20 odd years old. And, uh, and that's what made us have an appetite for redoing that song uh, in, a, in a completely different way. I mean, I love the original song is 
killer, isn't it? It's a great rock song. Yeah. One of the best rock anthems of all time. Uh, and I love the Manics. But we, I wanted to do it in a totally, totally different way, in a, in a gentle, thoughtful, sensitive way, almost converting it into a ballad, a piano ballad. When we went to the studio, I said, let's, let's do this as a piano ballad. You know, huh? what? You know, it's the rock song. Well, but we... Let's just do it with a piano and see how it sounds and how, how it feels. And that set the tone in a different kind of way altogether. And, and we were really happy with how it turned out as a song. And then, uh, and then we made the video to go with it. Just to illustrate the point, really, just to illustrate the whole, you know, the, the message within the song. Um, yeah, we enjoyed we enjoyed the process of making that song in every way. Enjoyed it a lot. Definitely, um, your latest release, uh, "Mute," was an incredible idea, all instrumental. Um, but I'm sure the fans miss uh, Chrissy's voice. Um, but you really. <laughs> you, you really, and definitely, I want you to talk about that. But it seems like you're really in control of your careers, and that is uh, wonderful. And you're able to make the decisions that you want to. You must have a great relationship with your label and uh, the people you work with. We thank you for saying that. I mean, yeah. we've always been very independent and strong-minded or bloody-minded maybe <laughs> we, <laughs> when we get something like when we get the bit between our teeth we want it to happen so we're very much even though the last album was released on cherry red we were very much in control of what was on it when it was released you know the whole look of it the videos the songs that we would release prior to it were we well we are absolutely control freaks there's no, there's no <laughs> point denying it um you hopefully know, in the best uh, 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 in good way. As a, uh, that's part of uh, uh, you know what we do the, the songs themselves the way we perform live the way the show looks and sounds uh the videos that we make the packaging for the albums the promotion for the albums we want to do it all we want to yeah. do it all and, and and we want it all to make sense together and you know i i i couldn't um I don't think I could get into thinking that, well, we've got a designer over there doing the album cover, another designer doing the stage set and another guy doing this, and another guy looking at yeah. that. And then we become just a component in, in, in this great big thing, you know? Yeah. I think it's better when, 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 when we all, we, we do it all. And then either it's all great or it's not all great, but at least it's our problem to, yeah. to, to, to resolve. And it's, we like that. Yeah, it's kind of purer, isn't it? Because yeah. there's no, yeah. There's no external influence on it, even down to, I mean, we've done a couple of videos where we haven't had that much control, but for the most part, we're sat in on the edits or we've shot them ourselves, some yeah. of them were, uh, but everything, yeah, we are control freaks, but it's our name and our face that is going on the packaging, so yeah. it has to be, even down to being on stage, you know, we mix our own sound from stage, but we know more than anybody what we want to sound like. So how can we expect somebody else to? <laughs> can, can we introduce is, you to this, this little fellow, by the way? He's <laughs> yeah, third go man. ahead. He doesn't get a lot of profile in the- Are you in, kidding? In, in, but, but he's- He, <laughs> he he's, gate crashes uh... every interview. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's <laughs> wonderful. That's Fashion. wonderful. Um, right. In that same article, I was uh, talking to you about uh, yeah. the Prague Magazine. Uh, Rick said, uh, if we managed to write a song in the two hour period between uh, when you play and the doors open, uh, you'll give it a chance. You'll, you'll actually yeah. play it in, in front of the audience and just see how they respond. That is absolutely amazing. And I don't think I've ever heard of another band that's, that's done that. Um, it's creative. It's adventurous. Tell us a little bit about how that, uh, or have you done it? Um, is there yeah, like a track? Ones. Yeah, is there a track? Go ahead. I think we're addicted to danger <laughs> of putting ourselves in a crazy, dangerous position. Um, but I, I, we, we have a pretty strict routine when we're touring. We get to the venue at three o'clock. Uh, we get loaded in, of course, we get set up. Uh, and we're usually sound checked by five, something like that. If we can't, yeah. So, so that gives us a bit of play time. And that's the time when all the songs generally are written. Most of the songs that we write are written at sound checks. We, we, we don't lock ourselves away in a, a log cabin in the mountains for a month to write an album. We couldn't work like that. 
uh, I think writing songs comes from part of the process of being on the road. Anyway, yeah, we, we, if, if we write a song or, or write the, the structure or the skeleton of a song uh, in that playtime on a, on a sound check, we'll say, you know, well, how, it's, it's kind of 70% developed, you know, but we haven't written the ending yet. We're not sure how it's going to end or not quite sure what the middle part's going to be. But let's do it anyway and see how it sounds and see how it feels and see if it resolves itself by playing it in front of an audience. That's quite scary, but like I say, I think we're addicted to, to danger and putting ourselves in <laughs> crazy situations like that. So we love doing that. And sometimes, you know, the energy of the evening will, will complete that song. It's the energy that, that's added to it by performing it in front of an audience when we're not quite sure what the next chord is or how it's going to end. It kind of resolves itself sometimes and really forms in a great way. And, you know, we always tell the audience, that, you know, we've never played this before. We only wrote it a couple of hours ago. We're not quite sure how it goes. So, you know, if it falls into pieces on the stage, please pretend that you never heard it, we never played it. And they understand that relationship, you know, they go along with that. Uh, and, and, and yeah, I think they, they kind of feed off the excitement of hearing something really new as well. So they love it, we love it. Most of the time, it works out what, great. What's a good example of a song? Because, yeah, it is. And maybe some of your fans out there will go, oh, yeah, uh, I remember that. Sebastian. Yeah, Sebastian. Um, hey, Pluto. Um, Any cure. Um, we were writing that in a church, in a church. in um, back. Um, and it was just one song that, of it, the lyrics weren't even finished. So I remember just repeating the verses um, a couple of times. Um, yeah. But I, I mean, remember that, it, that song particularly when we sorry when we've written it we didn't have a name for the song so and, and it was like getting onto doors open time we thought what are we going to call this song and we're going to play it tonight so we asked the we we're playing in this lovely church in Lubeck and we asked the the, the minister of the church uh, what his wife's name was and she he, he said she's called Enikur so we just named it after her and, and that was the song perfect that was excellent all right, um, let's talk about the new album. Uh, tell us what to expect. Do you can you announce a name or a release date or how many tracks? Or... It's going to be Up released. To in, it's going to be released in August. Um, thirteen tracks, unless anything changes. But um, so far, it's thirteen tracks. Um, we're releasing the first single off it in two weeks' time, actually, on the twenty second of April. And that's going to be called Under the Headlights, the new single. So we're quite excited to be releasing new music yeah. again. It's actually the whole record's just off to be mastered at the moment. And then, you know, it's full steam ahead. Well, we're, we're very pleased with the album. I think the album is a, uh, a development, an evolution from Mesbranto, which I'm, I'm, I'm pleased that we've moved, again, moved a step further forward, I hope. Uh, yeah, we were very, very happy with Mesbranto. It got some great reviews and it did us a power of good, a lot of good. Uh, and, and in a way, when you've made an album that's gone down okay, it, it, it starts to worry you. You know, is the next one going to be any good? You know, are we, are we, are we going to have a, a Led Zeppelin 3 on our hands where people don't quite like it as much as number two or something? Which um, could happen. It, it can easily happen. But uh, I, I hope, I think, I, I'm really, really pleased and proud of the new album. I think it's great. I think it's the best work we've done so far. Uh, and I can't wait to get it out there. So I hope I'm not going to be bitterly disappointed. People will love what they love, no matter what. I think you can only do what feels authentic at that time. Yeah. And the sound has slightly changed. I mean, we didn't want to make another Mesmeranto. Mesmeranto is in its own frame and it exists in its own you know space and time yeah. and it couldn't have been any different from what it is the new album isn't isn't trying to be mesmeranto too no, even though part of it is kind of i guess picking up where it left off in a way but it's some of it is more heavier yeah some of it's you know not heavy as in you know metal or anything but you know there's a lot more guitar on this album yeah. than we've used in really a long in a long time i think yeah. I, I think that's i, I think that's okay. the one thing that defines it. it it's it's the rockiest album we've done so far but that said there's um, still a lot of ethereal moments isn't there oh not, yes there are if you like mesmeranto hopefully you like it yeah um 
I mean, I'm, I'm a guitar player. Underneath it all, that's that's my primary instrument. But really, I'd hard, hardly been playing any guitar at all on the previous couple of albums. Uh, and, and guitar was like becoming my the instrument I used to play. Um, but this one, we got the guitars out again and we got some, you know, raunchy sounding amps out and things like that. And I enjoyed myself. <laughs> well, good, good. What, what's the title of the album? I think you said the title of the uh, first single, but. Now, we were just talking before we started speaking to you. Are we allowed to actually say the title? Oh, of the well, album? yeah. I think that we are, don't you? I don't think we can keep it. Over to you. Okay, it's called Hotel Utopia. No, oh, excellent. Hotel Utopia. The reason for that is there is a theme, like there was with Mesperanto, there was a kind of a theme running through all the songs, which kind of loosely knitted them all together. Uh, there is with this one as well. And that theme is talking about the afterlife and talking about whether there is an afterlife and how many different perceptions of what happens after we're gone from this place that there are. And, uh, you know, our fear of the afterlife, our fear of not knowing about it, uh, our uncertainty of it, you know, it, it pervades our whole life, doesn't it? Uh, and the album is really themed around the concept of what is the afterlife? It's really about a, a big question rather than a big answer. We haven't got the answer, uh, but we've certainly got the question. And that's Hotel Utopia is our metaphor for where we go to when this place is true. We go to this hotel called Hotel Utopia, maybe. Who knows? Well, I'm in. Uh, sounds a little <laughs> bit like Hotel California, but maybe a, a <laughs> brighter side. California. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, definitely. I, I'd be very interested in uh, reviewing it. But uh, yeah, that that absolutely is exciting. And um I'm interested. I, I hope everyone else yeah. is already. That just the title and what you described there. Um, yeah, excellent. <laughs> Can't <laughs> wait. Um, <clears throat> you guys did a, a great thing that I've noticed some bands uh, did, and that's you uh, did use uh, recognize the value of Facebook Live, and you did those live shows, which really kept people in touch, kept your audience in touch, your fans during the pandemic. Um, did it help you guys and, and your fans weather that that storm and keep the fan base together um, while you couldn't tour and uh, you could still get new music out and uh, basically talk, communicate with your uh, fans? Definitely, we've had, we had and we still have so many messages and people telling us that our live streams the big armchair concerts kept them going and we're like what an honor to have a part in helping people through this and we were doing it obviously for our fans and to connect with them but also because we wanted to play and connect mm -hmm. with people too you know it was it was definitely a two-way street um and it really helped there was lots of people who were joining who'd never even seen us before um look it kind of brought our fan community together as as well people who wouldn't normally cross you know they live in different parts of the country different parts of the world were all like hi everyone in the comments as you and it just became this beautiful gathering of people it was just great wasn't it it was fantastic i mean when you do a tour it's great because you know you play in glasgow that night and then you play in london then you play in manchester and etc cetera, etc cetera. you go all over the place but never do you have all your fans from all over the world listening to the same gig at the same time? And it was an incredibly bonding thing for them, I think. I think the fans were talking to each other on Facebook all the time, and they were loving the experience of, you know, someone in the States talking to someone in Manchester and, and someone in France talking to someone in Edinburgh, uh, and they're all watching the same performance. And it, it felt a really wonderful experience for all of us we we, we really needed it because we, we were so starved of playing we were desperate you know we we, we we thrive on playing live and and to have a couple of years with hardly any real gigs was was really painful for us so we we were doing it as therapy for ourselves partly uh but it, it was a great community building experience and uh, i think you know very well worth it we enjoyed it a lot yeah lockdown kind of 
did us a favor because before that if anybody mentioned facebook live even going on talking we were like mm. no 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 don't want to do that too scary <laughs> too too yeah. too you know revealing we feel too vulnerable yeah. um so it was a terrifying experience when we first did yeah. it it really really was i felt worried sick for weeks <laughs> we both before were. It, um, it was it was the scariest gig we've ever done isn't it Talk, playing to the armchairs in my living room you know bizarre but crazy. it was but it was great yeah now you like it now you love it probably yeah um well now you do have the live shows again and uh you've had a few shows already and you got a spring tour you're announcing uh, tell the fans about where you're going and what to uh, expect during the shows. Are you going to play, obviously, some of the new album, but how are you going to mix everything? Go on. <laughs> <laughs> where, where do we start with where we're going? We, well, we start on April 22nd in Milton Keynes. It's all in Britain, this first tour. Uh, I think it's about 15 dates. I'm trying to actually get the list up now. <laughs> well um, done. Sorry about that. Yeah. No, well, no, no. It's a good question. Um, okay. We should have been more prepared. You can hold. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. No, you guys. Oh. Are prepared. Okay. Off we go. So we start April twenty second, Milton Keynes at the Stables. Then we're in Liverpool, Cambridge, Glasgow, Edinburgh, Halesworth, which is in Suffolk, Bath, Nottingham, London, Manchester, Falmouth, Saint Austell, down in Cornwall. All those two. And then back up north, Sheffield, and we finish in Halifax at the Square Chapel Art Centre on June the 9th. That's and a good idea, though. Is, is stay, stay local with all the um, passport. No, no, you don't have passports through Europe, but all the ridiculous stuff going on with um, uh, Brexit and everything. Oh, yeah, we had... Um... I can't remember which band it was now that was meant to be playing in Paris, but all of their stuff was held up mm. and they had to cancel it. They were actually there, but they couldn't do it. Obviously, they didn't have their instruments back line or anything. And it's just like heartbreaking. So obviously, you know, hopefully COVID is going to, you know, ease mm -hmm. or burn itself out. Um, mm -hmm. And then hopefully Brexit, ugh, what a nightmare, is going to calm down we hope um but as for the show um like we said we've not really toured mesmeranto yet so the show is going to be quite a few songs from mesmeranto some from diving for roses some from songs from a satellite yeah. as well but we, we haven't actually got the set list together yet so if any of your viewers want to give us a potential set list when is this yeah. airing because... let us let us know <laughs> what, what they'd like to hear it'd be yeah. great yeah um let's see and so the new album is coming in august so that uh, will you try some of that like you mentioned uh, or not yet a few songs yeah there will be a few there'll be a few yeah. but we'll be holding some back because okay. like i said mesmeranto doesn't feel like she's had her moment yet so <laughs> we're gonna give yeah. her more more air time and then um we will be trying a few songs out from the new album because that's what we do. You know, we like playing new, yeah. new stuff too. So this probably will be the 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 kind of end of Mes the Mesmeranto era, won't it? We have another tour book for September, October, which will be just after the launch yeah. of Hotel Utopia. So that will be a, to a very much dedicated to uh, to the new album, that tour. And, and a lot of bands are in that same situation. They released fantastic albums, couldn't go out on tour and let people hear it. Mm -hmm. And people still love all that music like they do for Mesmerano and uh, haven't been able to see it live. And yeah, I, I definitely, um, it, you're smart not to let it go and not to just sort of glance over it because it, it was a fantastic album. Thank you. Oh, thank I think you people much. do want to hear exactly what you said you know people want to hear what they know as well i think they like having the sneak peeks and it, it would be kind of self selfish of us in a way to sort of we'll just play the new stuff because that but we've because we've played so little it all still feels really fresh we don't feel but if we do feel bored of a song that won't be in the set because we can't give it our all when yeah. we're like oh not that again yeah, yeah. you know we 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 like to keep it fresh i don't think we can we're not that good at faking 
no we have to be excited <laughs> we have to be yeah. excited to get excited about what we're doing you know so if, if, it, if it doesn't turn us on yeah uh, no we won't let's not do that song you know yeah. if it's not turning us on anymore let's give it a rest for a while and, and we, we, we've got to be into it on yeah, stage haven't we? otherwise so a balance, the whole thing there? is pointless yeah yeah, she hit it on the head. There's a balance. Imagine, you know, everyone that if Led Zeppelin was going to tour again, mm -hmm. stare at heaven, stare at heaven. Stay. Yeah. They yeah. Played, yeah. They've probably played that song more than a million times and yeah. they may still love it. But at the same time, it's like we, we got a huge discography yeah. um, mm -hmm. and it, it is. It's a beautiful song. I'm just saying, uh, yeah, you understood <laughs> you definitely um you, you can understand after touring that long how uh, you want to do something there well let me open it up to you guys um is there i know this was kind of short but is there anything you wanted to mention that maybe we haven't talked about i think we actually talked about everything that's like going on yeah um I don't, I, you know, we've, we've got the new single coming. Um, I think, you know, all of our news. Um, I guess one thing that we did set up during uh, lockdown, which has been helping keeping us going uh, is Patreon. Um, and I think a lot of fans are moving over to this kind of, even though we still give as much as we give on social media and in our mailing list, all of that, you know, and the concerts were always free. Uh, but I think, People are finding uh, people aren't maybe buying as many tickets. People are still a bit scared of COVID. So there's lots of new platforms to help music become more sustainable. So like Patreon, Ko-Fi, you know, there's there's lots of new avenues. So that was another thing that took us completely out of our comfort zone. Launching Patreon, we were like another thing that we said we'd never do. <laughs> <laughs> we face lives, yeah. and these are things that we're like really enjoying doing. It's yeah. uh, I guess we have to, you know, join join the future. You know, things are changing. Life is changing massively, mm -hmm. especially for musicians. These past two years have been a real oh, learning process. Changed. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and it's still we're still, you know, getting a bit of the um, shock waves from that, aren't we? Because people yeah. aren't going to gigs as much. Um, but yeah, uh, Patreon's been quite a fun thing, hasn't it? It's been a great thing. It's been great. We enjoyed it. The, the Patreons have enjoyed it. Well, this, hopefully they still oh, are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, apart from that, I don't think we have any other news. Well, one thing I would like to ask you is, uh, <laughs> one of our big ambitions is to tour in the States. I've never toured in the States with yeah. any band, and I'd love for us to come over to the States. Question for you, do you think our music would be accepted in the states absolutely it was, it oh my the gosh. definitely um i don't think there's any question about it now the thing is um you're going to have unfortunately I, i'm on the west coast you're going to have more success on the east coast uh there's a better i mean they actually you know last i looked they have prog radio stations which as far as i know there's none out here we do Go have ahead. a um uh, a Prague festival, uh, at least here in Seattle, but there are uh, other places. Uh, um, but definitely, uh, the East Coast is is probably the best yeah. place to start looking. It would be great for you guys to be at Rosfest. I know that they've already uh, scheduled everything for this year, and I think it happens. Yeah, it's either April or May. So yeah. It's too late for this year, but definitely uh, get in touch with them. Um, I, George used to be in charge of it, but he's uh, left. There's there's a new person there. I, I knew him, but uh, but that's that's always a great uh, uh, venue. And there's the Prague cruises and things like that that are going on mm -hmm. down in Florida. Um, yeah, no, I, I think your music is very accessible. Um, and uh, I don't want to say it, but I guess I got to. But yeah, there's a huge uh, Kate Bush following around here. And Chrissy does sound a little bit like her. And that, that whole 
genre, if you want to call it that, um, is very welcome. Yeah, no, there's there's a lot of us out here uh, that are proggers um, that we just aren't as organized as uh, on the East Coast and um, especially in Europe. But you, you can look at... <laughs> All right. You've got a year to get organized. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, I would love to have you come out here. Uh, I, I would love to have you come out here if you have a relationship with uh, Steve Hackett. He usually comes over here to Seattle. Yeah. He, he's coming, uh, I can't remember, I think it's either late summer or fall. Um, and, and I know that's probably too late to get involved with, but uh, I, I saw a show of his, uh, well, I've seen several, but uh, the the last show I saw was at a dinner theater in, in Seattle. And that was, I wish he was coming back there. He's going somewhere else, I think now. But um, it was perfect. I mean, you're sitting there eating dinner and Steve Hackett's like 10 feet away from you and uh, playing, you know, uh, something from um, one of my favorite films, mm -hmm. Foxtrot. And mm -hmm. it's like, nothing could compare to that that was incredible but yeah and that's that show was sold out so definitely there's right. there's prog people out here they just um they might need extra notices or you know um media stimulation to wake them up and say hey these guys are really good and uh, all the awards you've received and all the accolades you've received um, in the music itself, the music speaks for itself. Uh, I don't think you'll have any problem finding fans out here. That would be absolutely brilliant. Yeah. It's one experience that we really would like to have. Um, yeah, and maybe we need to stalk uh, Steve a little bit more and say, yeah. I'd love to support you over <laughs> Come there. on, Steve. He's so great. He's a lovely guy as well. But yeah, he, he very nice. Like he works so hard. He really oh, does. Oh gosh, yeah. And yeah. you know, I we love touring. I think he's probably one of the hardest working. His live musicians is incredible. Mm. The amount of work that he does, and you think, good for him. And Absolutely. he still loves it, doesn't he? You know, you you wouldn't go along and think, oh well, he's bored because he <laughs> isn't. He's still, you know, when you see some just going through the motions. But I guess he keeps it fresh all the time and is always approaching, you know, using different albums to base the tours on. So I think that's a really good idea to keep things fresh, keep yeah. yourself interested, and then everybody else will feed off your energy as well, yeah. won't they? And people, people Another... need that music. You know, yeah. it's, it's an essential part of the evolution of music. Genesis was a big piece in that, in, in that jigsaw of... Of, of progressive music in those days so people will always need that music not just want it they, they, they need that piece so i'm glad yeah. that steve is keeping the flame going another one uh, that i forgot to mention i should never forget to mention uh, alan white uh the drummer yeah. for um both uh, john lennon and of course yes uh yeah. he lives he lives in uh, uh east east of seattle and he participates in all sorts of different things. The Seahawks, the NFL football team, he's like the uh, drum. They have a drum uh, drill team. I, I'm not sure if that's the right word. But anyway, for the, for the NFL, he participates with that. And then uh, we used to live in Issaquah, and it's uh, up in the mountains. And uh, he goes out there every year and does uh, a show usually with his band, White. And um, uh, he's very uh, involved with the music scene here in, in the Seattle area anyway. And I, I can't talk about the whole U.S., but, uh, but there definitely is. Uh, in some of your bigger cities, uh, you'll definitely find a prog base um, and people that love the music um but um yeah i mean the local radio and stuff is mostly either throwback or hip-hop and stuff like that and um it, it's hard to get in uh, on the radio scene um most of it you're going to do through the internet unfortunately yeah. <clears throat> I think that's the same everywhere as well isn't it you know um 
that seems to be the way. So thank God for the internet. That's what yeah. I say. Yeah, yeah. You know, that that I know a lot of people say. I guess bad comes with good sometimes, doesn't it? You know, it's. Uh, but we would never have met lots of our fans if it wasn't for the internet. You know, without having a huge label behind you, independent musicians don't stand a chance, do they? But we do with the internet, even though it's obviously very saturated. We do manage to find our audience, which is great. We've not found them all yet. <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're working on it, but um, we're we're lucky to be in this time, really. Aren't yeah, I think we? so. It's an exciting time. Yeah, we we are lucky. Yeah. Mm. And and Prague is kind of coming back. It, no, it's not going to match with hip hop and all these other things. But um, there there's a desire for people. I mean, maybe they're burned out from that stuff and they want something more. Um, so it's. I don't know if I want to say it's growing in popularity, but it definitely is. Um, it's not the the bad name that it used to be uh, during the, you know, maybe the early 2000s, maybe the late, you know, uh, 1990s. It kind mm -hmm. of got this bad name that it was too ethereal, too yes. symphonic, too, too much for people. Yeah. And um, now people are like, well, this other is not enough i need something more so yeah. yeah it kind of feels like it's it's sort of spread out a little bit like there's lots of bands like us well not lots of bands like us we're a bit weird but there's lots of <laughs> there's lots of bands sort of what you would put in a similar genre to us that we wouldn't know what to call ourselves yeah so you wouldn't call us out and out prog so yeah. we were quite surprised when prog magazine embraced us and the prog community embraced us we were like what what <laughs> yeah we, 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 never really, we never really had an intention to become a, a progressive rock band even even though that was the music that i was feeding off when i was a young guy you know learning guitar and and starting with music you know that that was the food i was eating but we never we never intended to become a prog band we weren't intended um, to be at any in fact, i'm not label. quite sure what we are anyway but i think really. that's what i mean i think prog is embracing all the people that aren't are just creating music and they're trying to well, not trying to be they are being creative and, and, being and pushing yeah. boundaries yeah. a little bit they're not yeah. mainstream they're not so it's yeah. it feels like progressive is a almost a brand new genre as well yeah i think it is you know of <laughs> this wave of new younger artists too which is great because yeah. why should it why should progressive music die with the 70s why can't we keep progressing mm. why can't we keep pushing boundaries and not doing what everybody else is doing yeah. you know it's it's well, great probably the 70s is such a fantastic foundation for the future of progressive music you know and the, the new bands like us are kind of resting on that kind of foundation in a way we don't you know kind of be like it because i think you know that 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 era of music will 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 never come again probably it was just such a beautiful wonderful time of creativity and music but yeah there's new generation of progressive people who are trying to do things in a different way like us uh, and, and yet we have this wonderful legacy beneath us of, of all these great bands and great albums that will never go away and will always inspire us in some way but why should a genre be pigeonholed with the time? Because classical yeah. isn't, R &B isn't Absolutely. pop isn't. So prog shouldn't be, prog progressive no. should yeah. be ever, even more moving forward yeah. than the others, you know, the others. Yeah. yeah. So um, in a way, I think prog magazine themselves are absolute pioneers for new music and, you know, to them. Because Absolutely. That they they helped us find an audience. They're helping other artists that we know that we're friends with, mm. that would be on the ethereal rock edge, and they're embracing them as well. And it's great because they really are helping shape the future of new bands that don't want to be pop and don't want to yeah. be R and B or rap. You know, it's yeah. it's great to have such a great supporter. Yeah. Um, and people like yourselves. Yeah, and, and, you exactly. Know, and, yeah. And, and, Platforms like yourself that are, 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 are you know, showcasing mm. this kind of music and, and giving it status and giving it, you know, a real big presence in the, in the yeah. overall world of music. You know, you're all doing a terrific job. We, not, we need yeah. we need people like you, Prog Magazine and all the other Prog, uh, you know, websites and magazines all over the world. We, we, we need those things to yeah. keep this music growing and becoming better all the time because it's not just retrospective is it it's not, not a history all. lesson all the time it's great mm. to be able to look back and see 
artists that help create this mm -hmm. new exciting yeah genre but it's not just all about that is it it is about progressing and it is the sound of the future and yeah, yeah we're, we're creating the future and, and you know you guys are helping it happen thank you yeah end of the lesson <laughs> <laughs> sorry about hey that. no 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 that's that's fine um no thank you uh, both uh chrissy and rick uh, for taking the time to speak with us today on uh, Progressive Very Black awesome. Central. We wish you all the best uh, in the future and, and know that you're definitely, that new album is going to be fantastic. Uh, Hotel uh, Utopia. I definitely, I, I want to review that. I want to hear it. But uh, <laughs> it sounds it sounds fantastic. And I would love to see you guys live over here for sure. Um, there's a lot of fantastic venues and they've got to fill it with people. I mean, with bands. So keep, keep knocking on their door. Don't be afraid to knock right. on the door, you know, hundreds of times, uh, that next knock, uh, it's a sales thing, but that next knock might be the one they answer and, Oh yeah, we've been looking for you. Where were you? No. <laughs> That's so the music industry, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Our knuckles are really sore. Wrong. Knock it on yeah, yeah. <laughs> We have power tools now, but just break them down. <laughs> Thank you for having us. Yeah, thanks for having us. It's been great fun. All right. Well, I'm going to turn off the recording, but uh, hold on a minute.